Becoming a travel nurse was the best decision that I have ever done in my nursing career. In my first year as a travel nurse, I made $12,000. And last year in my last assignment, I made over $75,000 in three months. In my one and a half years of being a travel nurse, but only actively working for around six months, I actually made over $150,000, which is crazy. But besides the money, there are so many other things to love about travel nursing. My favorite being the flexibility. You have the flexibility of where to work and when to work. Like I said, last year I only worked for three months and I spent the rest of the year traveling, doing creative work and spending a lot of time with my friends and family. And because my whole philosophy in life is building a life that you absolutely love and on this channel that's what we're all about, being a travel nurse is such an important part of that. If you're watching this video, I assume that you are already a nurse and you're ready to embark on this journey. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you step by step how to become a Canadian travel nurse and this is going to be part of the Becoming the Modern Nurse series which is a series all about becoming a modern nurse or my experiences as a nurse in the modern world in Canada. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing is that you need to work for two to three years in a specialty that you love or that you like. So if you want to become a travel nurse, you actually need two to three years of experience in the specialty that you want to travel into. As a travel nurse, you actually only have one to two days of of orientation in the facility that you'll be working at. So the facility or the hospital that you'll be going into already assumes that you're a nurse, that you know how to be a nurse. They're not going to give you a long orientation as if you were a new grad. When I was a new grad, I had three months of orientation. When I was a travel nurse, I would have two days of orientation. If you're a new grad, I don't recommend you going to travel nursing right away because it might be very risky for you. It's risky for your license. It's risky for the patients that you are trying to take care of part of being a travel nurse is that you will get thrown into hard assignments you will have difficult situations difficult colleagues difficult patients and family members and you need to learn how to equip yourself with this skill set whether that's communication or technical skills or other things that you wouldn't get as a new grad and going into the hard thing right away so you basically need to learn how to deal with difficult situations so that you can be ready to become a travel nurse and having two years to three years of experience is enough to be able to do this so find a specialty that you love to work in and go travel nursing in that specific specialty some specialties that you can work at include er icu mental health or pacu there are so many different specialties out there i'm sure that there will be one that fits your personality i personally love being in the er so that's the specialty i chose the second step is to figure out which province you want to work in so in canada you have to get a nursing license in each province that you want to work in for for example, in Ontario, that's called the College of Nurses of Ontario. And unless you're practicing in your home province, then you actually have to get a new license. Personally, I got license from BC and Nova Scotia on top of my Ontario license, but I got these licenses when they were short staffed and a lot of travel nurses are wanting to go into different areas. So they were giving free licenses. So I took advantage of that and I actually got the licenses, but I'm not sure if they're still doing this. So normally, these licenses cost money that's why you have to do your research before you actually decide that you want to go into that province some ways that you can do research is going into facebook groups or using instagram or tiktok and looking up travel nurses profiles and dming the actual person creating the content going on youtube and finding them on social media i know a lot of you have done that thank you so much there are so many ways to do this research before jumping into the experience so take your time to figure out what province you want to work in so in general the process is the same for each province you go into the college nurses of whatever province you want to work in and you try to look up the application of how to become a nurse there and usually it's the same steps in every province and you just follow whatever the website is telling you to do the third step is to actually find agencies you want to work with once you have an idea of what province you want to work in then it's time to find agencies you want to work with a couple of ways of finding an agency that you want to work with is through indeed so this is a career website and you just type in travel nurse whatever specialty you're in and there will be a lot of ads that will pop up for you another way is through word of mouth so before i became a travel nurse i already knew some of my colleagues who have become travel nurses and i simply messaged them what agency are you working with can i use your agency too and that just snowballed into different experiences or different knowledge as to how i got into the different agencies that i'm working with right now and finding an agency can actually 
actually also be the first step before the you find the province that you want to work in because sometimes the agency will actually pay or reimburse you for the licenses that you apply for and speaking of agencies a very important tip for you is to actually work with multiple agencies i would personally work with three to four agencies and the reason for this is so that you can have options because you are not obligated to pick up the contracts that you see these agencies that are offering it is better when you have different options under your belt especially if you want to be flexible and you want to work a specific time then having or working with multiple agency is actually better for you as a travel nurse you are now 100 responsible for finding your work so you need to set up systems or figure out ways for the work to come to you again by working with multiple agencies versus you finding work all the time the agency usually have a roster of places that they are working with and they usually send out emails of availabilities of assignments and hospitals that you can basically pick up anytime anywhere whatever fits your schedule or your life and just an fyi the onboarding process takes actually about one to two months for each agency depending on how big or small the agency is and how fast hr is for them so it can take a long time so that's why it's better if you work with multiple agencies because you never know how long this is going to take and usually the process is that they're going to ask for your resume for your certifications for background check for a lot of the things that a hospital will ask for they will ask you as well so if you're working with multiple agencies you're going to have to submit these things over and over again so because there's a lot of things that you need to be keep tracking of i actually created myself a notion database with the list of all these certifications so i'm just going to show you what that looks like for myself for example right now i have my acls and i did my acls last year and i have a reminder here you see how that's blue and that just tells me when it's going to expire so i gave myself a reminder actually i should create this maybe one week before or one month before but you can change that and you see how this is red here in the vss that means that it's expired so i actually need to do that again if a hospital or an agency is requiring me to and i also included the cost here and some notes and then just the things that and the actual file itself so i have everything in one place so that when people or royal and an agency is asking for different documents i already have them here or i actually also have them in a google folder but i find that i can't keep track of things i don't know when these things are due because i have to do this again and again especially if you're doing specialties like the er or the icu or being a pediatric nurse you need all these extra certifications that if you don't take them on the same day it's so hard to keep track of throughout the year so this is something that i created for myself and you can do it too of course the next step is that you need to learn how to negotiate now that you're working or about to work with with an agency you need to learn how to negotiate you don't have to do this right away but i think it's a good idea to learn or know how to do it or how to go about it because i've never had this tip before from anybody so as a staff nurse you're going to be used to the rate that they're going to give you the first time in my old job i used to get paid about 34 dollars per hour and in my first assignment i was offered 40 dollars per hour and i thought that was such a big jump but then i really wanted to learn how to negotiate and because i had nothing to lose i'd ask for 50 dollars per hour and lo and behold they gave me the rate and i was like okay that is amazing that's cool i didn't know that you can ask for things in nursing and with this hourly rate i also got gas reimbursement hotel accommodations close to the assignment that i was working in pretty much that's it i've actually asked my rates throughout my assignments and i actually talk about my income throughout my travel nursing in another video so if you want to check that out but again worst case is that they would have said no and some of them did say no and that's totally okay the most important things when it comes to learning how to negotiate or working with multiple agency is the fact that you can now leverage each other's agency's offer with each other so for example last year i had two offers to go into two different assignments one assignment was paying hundred dollars per hour while the other one was paying 120 dollars per hour with overtime rate the other one did not have an overtime rate the other one was close to home and the other one was really far from home so depending on what you want out of this whole thing you might choose the hundred dollar per hour even though it is lower but it is closer to home so you can easily spend time with friends and family well for me i was chasing money and adventure at that time so i actually chose the 120 dollars per hour but sometimes the hourly rates will be non-negotiable and there's nothing you can do about that in that case there 
are other things that you can actually negotiate such as accommodations for example last year i wanted to bring my husband with me during my assignment he works from home so he could easily travel with me i let my agency know about this before accepting the offer so that i can actually make sure that i can bring my husband with me and that we could be put in a private accommodation if i was traveling by myself i have no problem be having roommates or living with random strangers i don't mind it but because i was with my husband i wanted some privacy so for the first month my agency actually put us in a studio motel like apartment for one month so it was very uncomfortable my husband had meetings throughout and on my night shifts i would hear him so he would actually take the meetings in the car and it was a terrible experience for himself and for myself and because we were so uncomfortable i was actually willing to walk away from 50 to 20 thousands which is what i would have earned from that assignment because i had another contract left but fortunately i talked to my agency and they were understanding they didn't want me to leave so they actually transferred us to a nicer accommodation they put us in a three-bedroom house for just with the two of us and i ended up staying and finishing my contract you have to remember that these agencies need you as much as you need them there are always going to be travel contracts there are always going to be assignments out there you have to learn how to think more abundantly you have to realize that there are always opportunities out there and as long as you're assertive and you are respectful and you just communicate what you want first you'll get it and you'll learn how to negotiate better again this assumes that you have other options so always find different options so you can always have that confidence to talk to the agency and say hey I have other options this is what I want you either give it to me or I will move on to someone else so the fifth step assuming that you have already accepted your first offer or first assignment and you are now officially a travel nurse the next thing that you need to be doing is to learn how to develop an entrepreneur mindset the biggest lesson that I have learned as a travel nurse is that I am no longer an employee even though you're a travel nurse you are actually providing a service to the agency or to the hospital you're now actually acting like a business. Each agency that you work with is now a client. They are not your employer unless that's the setup that you chose yourself to be in. But in general, if you are acting as an independent contractor with these agencies, you are now responsible for invoicing them, tracking your own hours, putting away your own taxes, and a lot of businessy things. But when you develop this entrepreneur mindset or business mindset when it comes to travel nursing, you actually feel that this is more than a job, that this is something Something that you actually like to do that you love to do and that you will always have options this is no longer something that you are stuck in if you don't like the contract that you are in you are free to terminate it just like if the hospital doesn't like you they can terminate you and that has happened in my multiple of my assignments where a lot of my colleagues have been terminated for I don't know reason but that is the nature of this job but the biggest thing is that if it's not working out for you for whatever reason if people are rude to you you can't take it and of course you wouldn't want to burn the bridges but it is something that you can end sooner rather than later there is a reason that travel nurses get paid a lot because there is high risk high reward and being a business is risky you are now acting like a business all right so those are the steps in becoming a travel nurse and you just basically do this on repeat until you get tired of it so for this next part of the video these are just things that you need to consider when you decide to become a travel nurse and some of the things that i wish on you before becoming one being an independent contractor versus employee so when you're working with an agency you're going to have the option to become an independent contractor versus an employee if you're an employee of the agency that usually means that you can only work with them and not with other agencies who are also providing services in that hospital that you will work in and also you will get your paycheck and all of the money in that paycheck is going to be yours they're going to take out the taxes cppei you know you already know that but if you're an independent contractor you actually get the entire amount of money that you have worked for so if, so if you pay $100 per hour you are not going to get tax you're the one who's responsible for putting that tax away so if you want to be an independent contractor you have to be really good at keeping your books so that means you need to learn how to track your hours you need to learn how to put away the taxes you need to learn how to basically manage your money you need to keep track of the things that you're receiving and also money that you need to pay to the government so I'm 
going to give you an example of what I had actually did for myself in order to keep track of these things. Again, this is something I did on Notion. So I'm going to give you an example for the dental practice that I'm doing. So for example, these are the names of the places that I've been to and the dates that I worked at. So for each day, this is how much I charge depending on how many hours I worked. And this is the calculation or formula that I created for myself. And I put 30% to be conservative, but you can put less usually for corporations because I incorporated myself. It's about 12%, but I want to be conservative. So I put 30% and this is basically my net income, which means this is the money that I can actually use for myself. I also included the expenses and then I am supposed to put the invoices here, the files, but I'm not very good at doing that. I'm just supposed to put the check marks here. As you can see, I'm not very good at this, but I'm going to get better. The other thing that you need to consider is setting up a business account. So if you decide to become an independent contractor, you can open up a, a corporation. And that just means that you are now acting as a corporate, as a travel nurse. And there are so many things that kind of goes into this. And I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not recommending you to do it. This is something I've done for myself. I need you to do your own research. Talk to experts before you actually do this. I have friends who are doing travel nursing and they did not set up corporations and that's totally fine. So again, this is something that you need to do a lot of research on before you actually decide to do it. If you do decide to incorporate, you actually now have to hire an accountant in order to file your taxes for your corporation. Maybe you're someone who does his or her own accounting when it comes to personal accounting, but for business, you need to hire someone and that can get expensive. The idea is the more that you can write off expenses that are related to your business, then the less tax you pay. And the other thing that you need to consider when you set up a corporation is learning how to pay yourself, whether that is through dividends or through a salary. And the difference is that for if you are paying yourself a salary, then your corporation needs to pay into CPP and EI versus if you are paying yourself dividends, then you don't need to. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't want to say something that is going to make you decide something. So better if you find an expert in this. I personally just want to share my experiences because this are things that I feel that is important to share. I personally pay myself dividends just because I want to do it that way. I don't have to worry about the whole CPP, EI and those other things. Anyways, it gets really complicated and I think this is another reason of why travel nurses get paid so much more is because they now have to worry about their accounting and they have to hire all these different people in order to do the accounting properly and that is why it's so important to develop this whole entrepreneur mindset. And the last thing to consider are the high paid specialties as a travel nurse. As a staff nurse in Canada, you usually get paid the same no matter what specialty you are in. So a mental health patient nurse is getting paid the same as an ICU nurse or an ER nurse. And this is something that I never really loved about the nursing industry here. However, as a travel nurse, this is different. If you are an ER nurse, ICU nurse, OR nurse, your pay will be different than if you are a med surge nurse or a regular floor nurse. And I think that is nice because because then there is an incentive to work harder. You will educate yourself more. You will get certifications. You will try to improve yourself as a nurse. And I think if you are working in areas where it doesn't require that skill set, then it's very hard to motivate yourself. And if you can, try to have different specialties in different areas. So for my first assignment, I actually worked in mental health. And even though my specialty is an ER, I also had a lot of experience in mental health because I had worked in a med surge floor before that flowed into all hospitals. I could basically work in any specialty that I wanted because of that experience. So again, I had lots of options, different options. If I wanted to become a travel nurse today or right now and pick up an assignment as a med surge nurse, I could because I've done it. So if you only have one specialty that you hate and you don't have any other option, that really sucks to be in. So try to get as much experience as you can before becoming a travel nurse so that when you become a travel nurse, you can pick where you want to go. Anyways, this video has become so long, but I also feel that it has been long overdue. So I really hope that you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. I hope that you be kind to yourself and that you take it one day at a time. Bye.